Well, good afternoon. I'm in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. Um, I'm in chapter 4. If you have your Bible and you want to look on, I want to read a few verses that Paul uh, was telling the Corinthian people. And uh, we'll get to see how Paul puts his words now, some people, if you didn't really know the Apostle Paul, you would wonder if he's sort of tooting his own horn. Well, he's not. Paul don't do that. Paul don't um, toot his own horn. Um, Paul is a minister of the gospel. He is sharing the gospel. He is all about the gospel. He um, is bringing words out to each of us that we need to hear the gospel and hear the words that he's saying. Paul was saying some uh, dynamic words here in these two verses that I picked out here, it says, if you look at verse chapter 4, is where we're located. I want to start with verse number 16. I want to start with 16, and we might even do verse 17 as well. It says, Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. I, I beseech you. I beg you. That word beseech actually means to, to beg. I beg of you. What is he saying? I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Now, if somebody didn't know the man that God dealt with to be one of his disciples and one of his apostles, people would automatically go and think, well, Paul is exalting himself. No, he's not. Because you always have to look at the next verse. If you size up a Bible passage with just one verse, you always have to go on and look at the next verse to make sure that the verse is in context of what Paul is really trying to say. What Paul is actually saying here, he's letting it be known. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. You know, if a person didn't understand what Paul was trying to say, they would think that Paul is basically saying, I want you to follow me. No, what he's saying is, I want you to follow the God that I serve, the God that I believe in, the, the Lord Jesus Christ that I believe in. He's not necessarily talking about himself. He's talking about the God that he serves, the God that he worships. And that's what it's referring to here in this verse 16. Wherefore, I beseech you, I beg of you. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to the Corinthian people here. He's relaying instructions to the Corinthian people, be ye followers of me. He's not saying here to be followers of him far as Paul is concerned. He's saying, be ye followers of the Christ that I believe in. Because if you notice in verse 17, for this cause, for this cause, or the only cause, is really what he's saying here. For this cause 
have I sent unto you Timothy. Now, if you know very much about Timothy, you will understand that Timothy was very young. He was, he was young in his age. Paul is older in his age. And he's reminding the Corinthians that, look, I have sent Timothy, who is my beloved son. Now, he's not saying that he is the beloved son far as Paul being the father to Timothy. He's talking about Paul being his mentor, someone that helped him in the Lord and faithful in the Lord. He's not just a faithful Timothy, who is my beloved son. That sonship that he's talking about right here is Paul and Timothy are friends with each other. Paul is taking Timothy under his wing. So Paul is trying to help Timothy to understand the gospel and to understand the gospel better so that when this man Paul goes off the scene, Timothy can actually pick up the load of the gospel and carry it on further. And that's what he's saying right here. For this cause... I have sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord. Was he faithful to Paul? Yeah, he was faithful to Paul. But we're fixing to see the proof that Paul was the man who he says he was. Because if you look on in that verse... Who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ? This man, Timothy, is going to bring you into knowledge and understanding of my ways that I received in the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul is actually saying, look, this is, I don't want you to be beholden to me. In that first verse up there, I don't want you to be holding to me. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. No, he's actually wanting the Corinthians to follow the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's using Timothy as that person that is a helper There's a lot of times that I need things done here around the farm, and there's things that I need done that is a helper. I need someone that is a helper. Maybe not as a full-fledged employee, employee, but a helper. Sometimes there's things that I can't lift. I've got to give you an example I've got two great, big, thick limbs in the back of my truck that I manhandled in the back of my truck along with some smaller sticks from the storm. I don't have the energy to unload them sticks because I'm afraid I will end up getting hurt. I feel like that I need somebody to help me to remove them and take me out of the danger zone because I don't want to trip and fall. I don't want to jerk on them big limbs and have it rake my leg. If you could see my poor looking legs, you would understand why, that I can't afford to get them messed up. I can't afford to let them be in danger. And that's what that's what Paul is saying here, Paul is saying, I want you to be followers of me for this cause have I sent unto you Timothy. Timothy is just a helper. He is just therefore bringing out the gospel, who is my beloved son, 
meaning my confidant, meaning the person that I trust that's going to tell the people the truth. See, Timothy was going to learn from Paul. Paul was going to teach it to Timothy by the ability of the Holy Spirit. If we had more people that would be willing to be a teacher to others, then look how much easier it would be for others to gain knowledge and gain understanding. This man, Paul, got his knowledge from the Lord Jesus Christ. He went into the desert place and went and got his knowledge by the Spirit of the living God. And this man, Timothy, is now there ready to absorb all that Paul has to give him. So it says, I have brought to you Timothy, who is my beloved son, meaning that these Corinthians can trust Paul. They can trust him because it says up here, I want you to be followers of me. Paul wasn't saying that to be braggish. He wasn't saying that to be bold. He was simply saying that because God had dealt with him and he's dealing with Timothy and he's wanting the people of the Corinthians to listen to Paul and to Timothy as well, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord. Meaning that you don't have to worry about Timothy being off in left field. I've listened to some preaching even today, and it's really sad that a lot of stuff that I've heard is not God anointed. Oh, it's in religion. There's religion all over the place now. I've noticed that I'm listening to more and more females. For some reason, I'm finding there's a bunch of females that is attempting to preach the gospel and to share the gospel. And my only question is, have they not read the Bible? I'm not saying that a woman doesn't have the place of 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 fellowship and a place of duty when it comes to the church. But the man is the speaker. Now, I know I'll end up catching hell for that, but the truth is the truth. All you got to do is go into the Bible and read it to you that 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 the man has the responsibility and when women can exert their authority then that right there lets you know that there's something that ain't quite lining up right there there's no reason that a woman can't share their testimony and share their love for God and do it in a way of a testimony but not to exert the authority of the man God set it up that way what do they do with that verse? What do they do with that verse whenever they go and they they start saying all these words? What do they do with that verse when they get to that verse in the Bible? Do they just sort of skip over that and they don't want that one to come out? No, that's exactly what they do. Because they're there to build their own little kingdom, their own little world. And Paul says, Look, I've sent Timothy to you, who shall bring you in remembrance of my ways. Who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ. See, this man Timothy is learning the do's and don'ts of the message of Christ. As I teach everywhere and in every church. See, this man, Paul, is the one that is saying, look, the message should be the same in every place that I have been and every church that I have taught in. Paul ended up facing down 
people that was not obeying the gospel. I wish I knew where that was, that it spoke on that very subject about about a woman being the speaker. It's not biblical. It might not be popular. I realize that it might not be popular, but here's the thing. It's not biblical. Now, some people will go and say, well, you know, I had a family member that was in the church and how that she did this and did that. And I'm not saying that that wasn't the case. But it still doesn't observe the Lord's words in the Bible. I wish I had enough time that I could go over there in the book of Timothy and find the verse where it talks about that the man is the one to be the speaker. Now, but here's the thing. Sad to say, there's probably a lot of men that ain't doing such a swell job. And so, therefore, anybody and everybody can call themselves a speaker. Well... I'm not really that much of a speaker. I'm just reading you what these verses right here shares to me. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord. Is Timothy going to have to do some things that's going to have to put up or shut up? I'm sure, according to this. He's faithful in the Lord who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways. Talking about Paul's ways, which be in Christ. See, Paul was in Christ. And when we go and we want to take Paul's words and start mixing it up and dicing it up, that's where we're messing up. The Bible, the word of God is true and all men be liars. So if you happen out there today to hear this and you happen to be a woman and you believe that the Lord has anointed you to stand behind the pulpit, then I beg to differ. It's not to say that you can't be anointed. It's not to say that you can't be uh, inspiration. It's not to say you can't be a prayer warrior. It's not saying that you can't have the love of God all over you. But man had a way, and God had a way of setting man up to be the speaker that is in the church house. And he's letting it be known right here. Bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. So, yeah, it might not be popular. Now, I'll probably end up catching flack. For But you know what? The Bible says what it says. We just need to obey the scripture. We need to obey the Bible and what the Bible says. Okay. Thank y'all for tuning in. I appreciate you listening. If I can be a help to you, there's several ways you can catch me. You can get me on YouTube directly. There's a phone number there, cell number. You can also go to my website, and that's elderlyministry.com. The YouTube is Elderly Ministry. You can go there and leave a message. Give me a call. Be glad to talk with you. If I can do anything, I'd be glad to help you. But don't get bent out of shape on just some of the things that I said today. Back it up with the Word of God. If somebody's going to get upset at what I said today, let them take the Bible and open their Bible up and see what the Bible says. Don't argue with me. Ain't no need in being upset and angry with me. Take it up with the Word. Take it up with the Word. Thank y'all for watching.